Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh and today we are going to do IRAC norms for SIDB grade A, grade B uh, 2024 exams, right? So MSME is a subject in the SIDB grade A, grade B and IRAC norms, it's a topic in the MSME subject, right? And today we are going to do that and we are going to do that in MCQ format. So watch all the explanations very closely. Uh, read them closely and take screenshots with the help of these MCQs. I'm going to explain the entire topic. I have already taught this particular topic in uh, on bankexamstudy.com in the SIDB grade A course. Uh, you can join it on bankexamstudy.com. Uh, we are providing video classes, notes, quizzes in the test series, and we'll try to provide at least like 10 full length mock tests for phase one. And we'll also evaluate the descriptive papers as well, right? So link to join the course is available in the description. Please check. So let's start the session with the question number one. What is the definition of NPA according to RBI's master circular on IRAC norms? So if an asset uh, has not generated any income for 90 days, it becomes an NPA, right? So if an asset has not generated any income for 90 days, it becomes an NPA, right? <clears throat> which of the following is not a category of NPA. So there are uh, uh, doubtful assets, there are loss assets, there are substandard assets, and then there are standard assets, right? But for NPA, there are three categories and the performing asset is not an NPA, right? What is a general provisioning requirement for substandard asset? So for provisioning requirements uh, under the IRAC norms, uh, we are going to discuss that in detail in the next slides. It's uh, generally it's 15% for substandard assets, right? So please give it a look for substandard assets for substandard asset provisioning requirement is 15% of the outstanding amount. It's 15% of outstanding amount. So substandard asset and asset which is uh, which is an NPA which is overdue for more than 90 days, but less than a year, right? So if uh, the substandard asset is secured, uh, then 15% of the outstanding amount, the unsecured exposures, which are identified as substandard additional provision of 10% is required, right? For substandard asset, if the asset is secured 15% of the outstanding amount, that should be the provision for unsecured substandard assets provisioning of 25% is required. Okay. So uh, this is a simple table, it's not there on the circular, but please remember that for standard asset provisioning requirement is 0.25 to 0.4. Latest updates are there for the real estate projects for them. It's I guess 0.75. So that is different. But for standard asset 0.25 to 0.4 percent of uh, provisioning requirement is there. Uh, for substandard asset 15% but uh, for unsecured substandard exposures provisioning requirement is 25% additional 10% is there. For doubtful assets it is 25 to 100% and for loss asset 100% provisioning is required right. For doubtful asset 100% of the extent to which advances are not secured. For doubtful asset 100% provisioning is required for unsecured exposures. Uh, but for doubtful assets uh, in which the advances has remained doubtful up for up to one year, 25% provisioning is required uh, for one year to three year, 40% for more than three years, 100% provisioning is required, right? So please remember that these two tables are very, very important from examination point of view. Which of the following statement is true regarding out of order accounts? For students for CCs, uh, out of order concept is used when uh, when it comes to CC cash credit accounts, we don't use the word NPA, we use the word out of order. So an account is out of order if it uh, continuously if uh, if the outstanding balance remains uh, continuously in excess of the sanction limit for 90 days, right? So that becomes the out of order account. 
what is the provisioning requirement for doubtful assets for a period up to one year so we did that in the previous slides the two tables please uh, try to remember that it's 25 percent pura table ko yaad rakhe which of the following is considered uh, while classifying an asset as a loss asset what is a loss asset the asset has been identified as uncollectible by the bank or external internal auditors then it is a loss asset 100 percent provisioning is required for loss asset what is true about the income recognition policy see uh, the income should be recognized on cash basis for npas for accounts which are performing which are not npa it should be recognized on accrual basis so what is cash basis based upon actual receipt on accrual basis based upon the due dates okay advances against a term deposit uh, national saving certificate uh, vikas patras kvps life policies they are not npas the banks they can actually redeem those policies so advances against these uh, these certificates they can never be an npa okay net npa is equal to gross npa minus provisions plus unrealized interest plus <laughs> other credit balances unadjusted right so please remember that that is important on which basis the income is recognized on performing asset on performing asset the income is recognized on accrual basis on npas the income is recognized on actual basis right if bank is not able to recover interest or installment from a term loan for more than 90 days then on which basis the income should be recognized it should be recognized on actual received because it has become and npa right what is the desirable provision coverage ratio for npas it is 70 percent is the desirable provision coverage ratio for npas in case of overdraft cash credit accounts which concept is applied for determining the npa status out of order out of order concept is used dairy loan account become an npa when the installment or the principal uh, installment of principal or interest thereon remain overdue for 90 days agriculture wala concept nahi lagega please <clears throat> read this slide it's very important an npa is a loan where interest or installment is overdue for more than 90 days 90 days or more a bill remains overdue for more than 90 days a cc uh, the account remains out of order for more than 90 days the installment or interest uh, thereon remains overdue for two crop season for short duration crops for one crop duration for long duration crops right this is for agricultural loans please remember that for rest of the categories it's 90 days ka concept is there but for agriculture this particular concept is there read it take screenshots let's move forward in a loan account where principal or interest is overdue for a period up to 30 days see students for uh, bigger loans rbi says even if the first installment is defaulted the loan account should be should become an sma account sma zero account so if a loan is defaulted the, after the first monthly installment is defaulted it becomes sma zero account after the second installment is defaulted as sma one then it becomes sma two finally it becomes npa okay in case of cc account if interest of principal is not serviced for 90 days the position of account is out of order please read it it's important right out of order means an account should be treated as out of order if the outstanding balance remains continuously in excess of sanction limit for 90 days <clears throat> sanction limit is 5 lakh rupees 5 lakh rupees is the limit but the amount due is rupees 6 lakhs that too for more than 90 days it becomes out of order 
राइट इफ इन केस वेयर द आउटस्टैंडिंग बैलेंस इज लेस बट लेस देन द सेंक्शन लिमिट बट देर इज नो क्रेडिट सो लिमिट इज फाइव लाख रुपीज दैट इज द फर्स्ट सिचुएशन इन द सेकेंड सिचुएशन लिमिट इज फाइव लाख रुपीज ड्यू अमाउंट इज लेट से ओनली वन लाख रुपी इंटरेस्ट इज लेट से रुपीज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड इज अ इंटरेस्ट बट देर इज नो क्रेडिट इन द अकाउंट इवन देन इट बिकम्स आउट ऑफ ऑर्डर अकाउंट और द क्रेडिट आर नॉट इनफ टू कवर द इंटरेस्ट इवन इफ देर इज क्रेडिट ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड रुपी देर इज अ क्रेडिट ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड रुपी बट इट इज नॉट इनफ टू कवर दिस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड रुपी इंटरेस्ट देन इट इज अउट ऑफ ऑर्डर अकाउंट एन एग्रीकल्चर अकाउंट बिकम्स एन पी ए इफ द प्रिंसिपल और द इंटरेस्ट देर ऑन रिमेन ओवर ड्यू फॉर वन क्रॉप फॉर वन क्रॉप सीजन इन केस ऑफ लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन क्रॉप एंड टू क्रॉप सीजन इन केस ऑफ शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन क्रॉप राइट अ कैश क्रेडिट अकाउंट शोज क्रेडिट अमाउंटिंग टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ओवर द लास्ट टू मंथ इंटरेस्ट डेबिटेड ड्यूरिंग द पीरियड अमाउंट्स टू वन लैख एंड सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड वाइल द क्रेडिट इज ओनली फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सो इट बिकम्स एन आउट ऑफ ऑर्डर अकाउंट देर शुड बी अ क्रेडिट ऑफ वन लैख एंड सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड एट लीस्ट वन लैख एंड सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपी क्रेडिट शुड बी देयर ओके द प्रोविजनिंग रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर अनसिक्योर्ड डाउटफुल एसेट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट फॉर अनसिक्योर्ड डाउटफुल assets i have already told you uh, when i uh, provided two special tables for the provisioning requirement for unsecured doubtful asset 100% provisioning requirement is there right but uh, for the secured doubtful uh, credit uh, npas if the an asset is remain uh, is doubtful for up to 1 year provisioning requirement is 25% 1 2 3 years 40% for more than 3 years it is 100% The asset would be classified as doubtful if it is uh, if it remains substandard for more than twelve months, right? The PCR or the provisioning coverage ratio is the ratio of provisioning to gross NPAs. So, students, that's all for today. I hope you like the today's MCQs that we provided. You can get the full CBD Grade A course, Grade A, Grade B course on BankExamsToday.com, in which we are covering the entire syllabus. Link to join the course is available in the description, right? Uh, if there is any doubt in your mind, uh, our WhatsApp number is also available in the description. List of our successful students, all these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams, and I'm really, really happy for them. You can be one of them in the future, and yes, you will be one of them in the future for sure. So this is our WhatsApp number where you can ask your doubts, and we are going to answer all your doubts. And that's all for today, students. Thank you, and have a very nice day. Bye bye.